You know, some folks are thinking that the Sussexes, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, should uh, find a new place to live. That place in Montecito is a little dangerous. So what do you think about an island? So that's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. You know, there's nothing to say that they can't buy an island anywhere in the world as a matter of fact. And uh, now with the leisure of time that they have, they have a safe place to live right now except for the darn floods that happen about once a year in their Montecito paradise, uh, they can take the time to purchase an island. And islands can be had for not that much money when you've got a hundred million dollars uh, to throw around. So let's look at the, um, you know, the possibility of uh, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, Archwell Island. Okay, we're going to use the Wildwood Tarot today. Um, this is a very positive deck, uh, by the way. So, uh, just so you know that right up front. The one problem I have with this deck is it's odd, it's awkward getting the cards out of the box, but the art on the cards is amazing. So you're going to see that. I, I guess I heard a little rumblings some little rumblings about maybe uh, Harry and Meghan were thinking about an island. And what a perfect solution to the kind of um, problems they have with privacy. And several folks uh, have chosen that way of, uh, of making themselves have a private home. Uh, so I think it would be a perfect solution for them. I don't know why they wouldn't immediately go out and start shopping the world for just the perfect uh, island for them to establish their forever home. Um, I would, if I could, if I had a hundred million dollars to play with. And you know, you can buy islands for not that much money. I mean, if people are spending several million dollars on homes, you can buy an island for that same price. Of course, then you have to build your uh, multi-million dollar home on it if it doesn't already have something there. But um, I don't know, it seems like a perfect solution to me. But before we do too much, let's have just a moment of meditation. Okay, so Harry and Megan, are they thinking about an island? Is an island feasible for them? Um, what part of the world might they buy an island in? So those are some questions, I think. So right off the top of my head, we'll start like that. Have they even considered uh, buying an island? Three cards. Heck, wow, these cards are not wanting to spread too much. Let me shuffle them one more time. Brand new deck, by the way. Um, I say brand new. I've had them for maybe a month, but I haven't used them in any readings. Uh, just kind of uh, interesting how they don't like to spread very much. But So, um, have they considered an island? Have Harry and Megan even considered an island? Wow. I think it's a brilliant solution to any issues they might have. First card is the King of Bows. And I should mention, these cards don't divine in the way that typical Rider Waite cards does. There's no cups, pentacles, wands, or swords, but they have alternative uh, signifiers. So this is the King of Bows. So this would be the um, swords, if I'm not mistaken. So the King of Bows would be the King of Swords. And uh, the King is the, and the, in this card, this is the Adder Snake. 
And um, so what does this tell us? King of Bows, he's going to be the very uh, master of his truth, his justice, his rules, and his law. And he's going to be lethal about it. Next card we have they considered an island is the Green Man. So this is number four of the Major Arcana. So this would kind of correlate to the Emperor in the typical Rider Waite deck. The Green Man is uh, all-knowing, all-powerful. He's going to be the fellow who is the um, like the elder or the shaman of the tribe, I would say. So and so that makes me think of um, an island um, leader actually. So the green man is in the center there, sort of the emperor equivalent, if you if you want to think of it that way. And then the final card is in fact the shaman. So this would be um, the magician of the deck if you're trying to compare it to a rider weight deck. It's the first one, first card of the major arcana, and uh, so the shaman is going to have all the mystical powers uh, available to uh, guide that uh, tribe uh, through uh, whatever difficulties they have. So this is interesting. Does this answer that question? Have they even considered an island home? If I look at the artwork in this card, it does kind of look like this could be an island paradise here. You've got open skies. You've got some water in the bottom here. You've got rocks uh, where these uh, the king of his swords, the, the king of bows. And how would you uh, hunt uh, on an island. You might think of hunting in a very primitive way with a bow and arrow. Um, I, uh, admittedly, I am I'm probably uh, have a biased uh, bent towards this reading, but this is what I what is coming to me. The Green Man, again, makes you think of sort of that um, going back to nature approach, and uh, the Green Man is like the Emperor. What he says goes, and then his uh, consultant here is the shaman who is like the magician and has all the tools he needs to make a thing happen. Let's draw one more card to see if this will tell us more definitively if they've considered an island home. And the Great Bear. So this is the 20 of the Major Arcana. So this is pretty much through the trip and it's almost uh, like at the end of the journey. And so this is going to, it still doesn't really say that they've looked at an island home, but it's they're very strong, very uh, shamanistic solutions to uh, the issues that they have. Sorry, I can't give you a definitive on this. First time I've used this deck, so uh, let's see if we can get through it together, you and me. And tell me what you think about these cards in the comments. Um, so, have they considered an island home? A lot of positive cards in that direction. It is a positive deck, though, and but not a, a clear answer. Have they considered an island home? Well, let's say this again. If they haven't considered a, an island home, will that be something that they're going to be considering? An island home. Is that something that Harry, that's going to come into the realization of Harry and Meghan? That's something they could do to sort of ensure their privacy. Uh, island home. Will that be something they will consider in the future if they haven't already? Okay, three cards. One. Two. Three. Will they be considering an island home paradise? First card. Well, the shaman comes back. So this is again that magic, and it's amazing when you get repeat cards in a draw like this. You got 78 cards in this deck to choose from, and when they come up again, that tells me that the cards are kind of tuning into me. They're knowing how I'm going to read them, and so they give me something that I've made a determination on that they know I know how it's going to be read. So again, this is the magician, magical, all the tools that you have to make a thing uh, happen. Will they consider an island home? They certainly have everything they need to make that happen if that's what they want to do. The next card, will they consider an island home? Three of arrows. This, uh, you know, typically the uh, the three of swords, which is what this would be similar to in a Rider Waite deck, is a broken heart. And you can see here that these three arrows, uh, arrows are in fact, you know, uh, have landed into a flaming heart. Will they consider an island home? And then the last card here is the ace of arrows. And so this is interesting because finally we get something that might kind of looks like an island in this situation here. The Ace of, Ar of Arrows or the Ace of Swords is a great big offer of truth, justice, rules, and law. And what could be the better way to gain control of their um, their destiny rather than, uh, other than to uh, isolate themselves in this kind of a way? But you know, it kind of 
is it is interesting here because this reminds me of Ireland, as a matter of fact, and I believe there's some beautiful islands off the coast of Ireland. So will they consider an island home? Well, they certainly have all the tools that they need with the shaman leading off their uh, journey. The impetus of this whole thing is a broken heart, which is the loss of their privacy, I would imagine, and no clear solution in sight. Um, and then the final uh, outcome here uh, for these uh, three little cards is kind of talking to us about an island as a destiny for their truth, justice, uh, rules, and law. This Ace of Swords or the Ace of Arrows. I'm going to uh, generously give myself a yes on that. So again, not uh, the typical cards that you would get. So let's see, an island home for Megan and Harry. What's another card? I Because I'm Obviously, uh, I'm wanting to know uh, if this can be a solution for them. Okay, well, let's ask it like this. Can an island home be the solution to their problems? And we're going to do six cards for, what, for whatever the cards can tell us in that regard. Uh, maybe they'll tell us about an island home. Maybe they'll tell us about something else. So we'll just see what these six cards read for Harry and Megan. And my uh, focus is on whether it leans towards an island. Admittedly, probably a very biased uh, reading, but uh, let's see what this says. And uh, so six cards. One, now remember, this is a fairly new uh, deck for me, and I have some, a little description towards the end of this video that'll tell you uh, more about these uh, cards. Also, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. <laughs> so. Did I have six? One, two, three, four, five, six. I do. So what can the cards tell me about Harry and Megan and an island home? The signifier card for that is the Guardian. This is the 15 of the Major Arcana. So the Guardian is telling us that, yeah, we want someone at the gate who's going to um, scare away anyone who might uh, approach us. What's the challenge to that? The challenge of that is the page of stones. The, the stones in this case would be earth or pentacles. And the page of stones, earth or pentacles, the page is the very weakest of the uh, royal cards. And so it could be just an idea or it may be an idea that doesn't have much value. So uh, we have uh, the guardian uh, of the, uh, the home, I guess, and then the page of stones, just a very weak uh, amount of value for that idea. The basis of this thing is the five of vessels. Vessels would be cups. The five of cups is typically, in the typical Rider Waite deck, it's kind of uh, having some spilt milk, but this is a really, really positive deck. I This is about as, as scary as this deck gets. Um, the five of vessels is almost a celebration of what you have in those vessels and a very earthy, um, shamanistic kind of a way. The past of this reading, oh, and again, a repeat card. So the past of this is that broken heart, that three of swords, that three of arrows. So it's the impetus for any kind of, and it's what's in the past. So that was the impetus for any of this, of the change that might happen. In the sky of this reading, oh, this is cool. So this is the five of bows, which would be similar to the five of uh, wands. Uh, okay, so wands are uh, actions, plans, uh, forward movement. The five of, of bows, if I want to compare it to the typical Rider Waite deck, is going to say pointless um, skirmishes, pointless uh, arg arguing. We've got one, two, three, four, and then five bows right here. Interesting uh, illustrations here. So that's in the sky. So I don't know how to read it yet, but we'll come back. And then the final uh, outcome for this is the world tree, which is the complete com end of a cycle. It's interesting that this is a home in a very natural environment. You can see the front door going into this beautiful tree of life with that um, uh, labyrinth right there uh, leading up to it, a circuitous route uh, to, to leave this home to perhaps think, go back to the real world. Let's do four more cards and see if this gets any clearer for me. The very signifier of that question, 
would an island home be in their in their future so with this queen of arrows this queen of swords this is uh, really a very uh, feminine uh, um, not, I don't want to say material mother like energy uh, coming up here and ser serenity the environment that that's in is this queen of bows so that's the queen of um, hearts yes the queen of hearts so and so the environment that this queen of uh, protection is in is the queen of compassion the hopes and the fears for this with this eight of arrows is uh, the eight of uh, arrows is going to be really uh, being uh, in battle. It'll be like the eight of swords, kind of. We see this person really uh, pushing their way through the storm and lots of uh, mist arrows laying on the ground all around them. So that's the hopes and the fears is that they can push through the storm and be missed by all these dangerous arrows. But it is a difficult journey. And then the final outcome for this question about an island uh, is... Uh, the Six of Arrows, which is transition. I'm hopeful because the, the Six of uh, Swords is about moving out of uh, troubled water. Uh, water is uh, integral to the solution that I'm seeking for them. And so the Six of Arrows, moving out of troubled water, um, I could generously say, uh, yeah, maybe that that's the way they're, they're moving. So let's read this whole uh, Celtic cross again and see if it brings me closer to that answer. So is an island home a solution for them in the future? Well, we have right here the guardian, the signifier of this whole thing. They need a guardian to guard the entrance to their home. And the challenge to that is that this page of stones, this page of pentacles, a very small amount of worth or just a small message at this point is what this could be. Uh, the basis of this is this five of cups, the five of vessels, and the five of uh, cups is telling us that um, they are really looking for some sort of an ethereal solution, compassionate to their problem. That's the base of this whole thing, that five of cups. The three of arrows would be like the three of swords in the past position. The broken heart is certainly what has led to any consideration uh, of some sort of a change in this way. And up in the sky of this, where, what you would aim for with this five of bows, which is a five of wands, is um, actions and plans and forward movement. So, but the five of bows in the typical right of weight deck is kind of, is the five of wands kind of pointless arguing. We see here the bows have been laid down and this other bow really can't be used. It's kind of engraved into the landscape. So interesting. The likely outcome of this with this uh, 21, this end, complete end of a cycle could mean to me that this could be, you know, the, the solution, the end of this, uh, this search. This uh, Queen of Arrows, this Queen of Swords over here, is being in complete serene feminine control of their um, what's coming up for them. And I think I read this wrong as a cup, but this Queen of Bows here would also Queen of Arrows, and then the Queen of Bows would be the um, like uh, wands, and would be making a movement, uh, getting something done, really being in charge of your plans. And then here with this Eight of Arrows is really um, you know. Being embattled uh, with that eight of arrows, like an eight of swords, kind of, and but moving uh, away from the danger because although it's being thrown at you, you're safe. And then with the six of arrows in the final position here as a six of uh, swords and moving out of troubled water, and perhaps this might be what this means. Tell me what you think in the comments. I've been very generous towards my uh, hope for them in this interpretation. What did you think about that? I think it's a very interesting uh, probability. And, uh, you know, tell me what you think about this idea in the comments. And also let me know what you'd like me to read about, because, you know, I'll read about that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hey. The Wildwood Tarot by Mark Ryan and John Matthews. And the illustrations are by Will Worthington. 
Very nice box these come in. They're beautifully illustrated cards, as you can tell from the cover. The only one of the problems, I have a couple of problems with the packaging, is the box is a little difficult to open, so I've left it partially open so I can get in there more easily to do this uh, review. But uh, the box itself is really nice quality. If you got this as a gift or if you gave this as a gift, you thought, well, that's a really nice gift. And uh, so uh, they're kind of Celtic um, influenced cards and published by Sterling Ethos. I got them on uh, Amazon. Now, once you get into the box, which is not that easy if it's fully closed, but once you get into the box, it's got an amazing uh, illustrated uh, book that tells you all about the cards. It's not in full color, but it's got a lot of uh, divination meanings in here. But if you go right to the back, it tells you about the two authors and the artist. Uh, Mark Ryan was an, an actor, a singer, a writer. It was in direction, and as it was even in the British TV film series, uh, Robin of Sherwood. Then John Matthews, a historian, a folklorist, and the children's, children's book author, and uh, also uh, graphic novels uh, having to do with King Arthur, Nazi Hut for the Grail, very amazing. And then the artist, Will Worthington, has been an illustrator for 30 years and involved with some very interesting projects, too, and several other um, tarot-related uh, projects. Now, inside here, if you get, and I don't often take a lot of time to go into the uh, book, but on this one, I will mention that if you do take the time to read through this book, it's really the best way to get to know these cards so they don't divine in the way that typical tarot cards do, uh, Rider Waite System does. There's some similarities, but not perfect. And uh, in this part one, Into the Green, the introduction by Mark Ryan, it really gives you some good ideas about why he decided to design the cards these ways, uh, this way and what they mean. So, good book. I really recommend that you look at the book and study it a bit, really, before you do the cards. Now, the packaging. I don't like when you have to suffer to get the cards out. They have a little hole here that you can kind of dig the cards out with, which kind of works, but it's not my favorite way uh, to get the cards. But, if you get past that and you get into the box, and you get to see the cards, well, you're gonna see they're amazing. Now, they're a nice card stock. They're kind of slicky. They're easy to use. Um, they um, distribute really well. And there's nothing particularly special about the back of them. They're, they're nice enough. But the card stock is quality. The cards shuffle really well, and they're easy to uh, do this kind of uh, shuffle like that. It's got a riffle shuffle, I think that's called. But when you look at the artwork on the cards, that's where everything really starts to shine. I mean, you really see how beautiful they are, all the intention that went into designing these cards, and you can really get some good uh, divinations out of here. There's some interesting uh, things here. They're not pentacles, uh, cups, uh, swords, and wands, but they're bows, uh, arrows, stones, and I forget what, and vessels. Uh, so those are the uh, different um, you know, designations of the cards in there. And then for the Major Arcana, they're a little bit different, uh, actually probably quite a lot different than the Major Arcana of other tarot cards that you may be used to seeing. But they're beautiful cards, and I really uh, love, and very positive message with these cards. So there you go, the Wildwood Tarot. Hope you enjoy them. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.